بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <coughs> السلام عليكم ورحمة الله As I'm going uh, <coughs> to my office uh, driving uh, I thought I will recite from the Quran and uh, in certain places wherever I feel like I would like just to uh, say some of the thoughts that uh, comes to my mind as it goes so it's not a promise to go with each verses rather some light commentary on some of the verses that uh, comes to my mind while I'm uh, reciting and driving and why I am doing this well perhaps not for any particular reason it's kind of a notes for me to keep on some of the fruits of the tadabbur of the Quran or pondering and thinking about the Quran and I feel it no harm to post it for the public either they benefit from some of the thoughts or it will be a good opportunity to engage in a dialogue to correct maybe some of the some of my thoughts so without further ado let's start today um, I will start from Tilka Rusul of Abdullah Ba'dahum Ala Ba'd, which is uh, verse 203, 253 from Surah Al-Baqarah. I will be Tilka Rusul of Abdullah Ba'dahum Ala Ba'd, Minhum Man Kalam Allah, who are Rafa Ba'dahum Darajat. وآتينا عيسى ابن مريم البينات وأيدناه بروح القدس ولو شاء الله ما قتتل الذين من بعدهم من بعد ما جاءتهم البينات ولكن اختلفوا فمنهم من آمن ومنهم من كفر ولو شاء الله ما قتتلوا ولكن الله يفعل ما يريد. This verse tells us a fact that the the messengers and the prophets of Allah they have ranks. فضلنا بعضهم على بعض. Some of them have greater rank than the others. They are not equals in terms of their rank. And uh, I was thinking of another verse uh, <coughs> uh, where Allah says, "La nufarriqu bayna ahadim rusulihi," and we don't make any distinction among any of the messengers of Allah. So some of uh, some of those who read those two verses, they might feel that there is a contradiction or uh, or at one place you'll find that Allah says there is no difference and another place Allah says that the ranks are different uh, so I think the the word used in Arabic is different there is tafdil which is in this verse and there are in the other verse la nufarriqu there is tafriq bayna ahadim min rusulihi and I think uh, what what it appears to me is that the the message there is a unity in terms of who sent who's who sent those messengers which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the same Allah that's that's that sent Musa is the same Allah that sent Yunus is the same Allah so there is no tafriq there is no difference in in terms of uh, of of the the unity of the sender who sent those those messages and also there is another unity which is the 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 theme which is the tawheed all the messengers came with the same theme all the messengers came with the with the same theme uh, of tawheed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and leave whatever bad practice was there that's why we'll find for example in surah al-shu'ara uh, the opening of those uh, stories of those prophets was uh, <coughs> always is used to open like 
كَذَّبَ قَوْمُ نُوحٍ الْمُرْسَلِينَ That the people of uh, Hud or people of Nuh, they have belied the, all the prophets. Why? Because of this unity. There is no tafriq. لَا نُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَحَدٍ مِنْ رُسُلِي So if you rely on, on Nuh, you are relying on all the other prophets. If you are relying, rejecting Prophet Muhammad, actually uh, you are rejecting Isa, Musa and all the, all the prophets. So let me continue. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا أنفقوا مما رزقناكم من قبل أن يأتي يوم لا بيع فيه ولا خلة ولا شفاعة والكافرون هم الظالمون On the day of judgment <coughs> the, the worldly bonds will not avail on the day of judgment There is no khulla so in this world you will find those who have created the, their bonds in the society on any means other than to please Allah especially if those bonds are created to fight uh, Allah his messenger and the and the noble cause then on that day those who befriended themselves on, on, on such uh, causes, they will be enemy. So all those khalil, all those close friends in this world, on the day of judgment, they will start to fight each other. They will become deadliest enemies, adu, except those who are the muttaqin. So this verse talks about them. Allah la ilaha illa huwa al-hayy al-qayyum la ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la nawm lahu ma fi as-samawati wa ma fi al-ard man dha alladhi yashfa'u 'indahu illa bi'idhni ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum wa la yuhitoona bi shay'in min 'ilmihi illa bima sha'a واسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم. This is the most uh, famous verse in the Quran, ayat al kursi and for sure I'm not going to talk on each part of it. It will take ages actually, but it's characterized. But it has like ten small sentences within this this ayah. And all of them talks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His majesty and His qualities and beautiful names and qualities. <coughs> I'll just pick one, one point here, shafa'ah. Man dhaladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi'idhni. So the word shafa'ah is intercession and this also mentioned in the previous verse that I just talked about. So, so here Allah says that no one is able to intercede in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except bi'idnihi, except by his permission. Now, if you think about this word shafa'a, intercession, it has the root word shafa, which is the opposite of witr, even and odd. So, shafa is even and its opposite. Uh, witr is odd okay a shafu wal witr and here shafa comes then when a person is single he's witr and he has a cause he cannot reach until uh, until he adds one so when you add one to an to a witr to an odd it becomes even so 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 that means that a person alone is not able so you have to go and seek help of another one to make it even and this is a common practice we do in our world right you want a job uh, in a company you go and search for some influential people maybe in the company and uh, try to intercede with him so that you can get the job uh, so that 
that friend goes to the CEO of the company and says that you see I have a friend and he will try to make the case for you uh, and make the shafa. He's making a shafa and he's making a shafa for you, okay, in front of the uh, in in front of the CEO. So maybe the CEO was at the beginning he might have rejected your resume, but because of the intercession of this uh, inside friend. Uh, he eventually might have changed his mind and uh, let you in. So this is how the, 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 the dynamics of Shafa'a works in this, uh, in our day-to-day uh, -day life. Now, now this very Shafa'a, the nature of the Shafa'a with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, hence the Quranic terminology of Shafa'a with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is different. There is not such a thing not such a thing that uh, that Allah changes his mind because of Shafa. He initially wanted to to let you in hellfire, and then because of Shafa, he he changed his mind. Everything Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is 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 already pre-planned pre and and destined. Um, also, another difference is that. Uh, Bi'idnihi, that the word bi'idnihi here, uh, meaning that need a permission for, for, for shafa. In our worldly case, there is not such a thing as, as a permission before you go for a shafa. Just meet somebody and introduce your friend to, to that CEO or whatever. Um, so then one might ask that then what's the value of, of of Shafa, what's the purpose that Allah made this such a mechanism? If everything is already uh, been planned, uh, so so what's what's the what's the what's the um, uh, main reason or main objective of Shafa? And it appears when we uh, see the incidences of Shafa is that really it is. To show the rank of those who are interceding to the whole mankind on the day of judgment or whenever the Shafa is being applied, has been accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the greatest one who will make Shafa is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of judgment, on the day of judgment, on multiple incidences, which is not the topic to go into detail. But on the Day of Judgment, Allah wants to show the rank of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu his high status in front of all the people in a, in a place where Adam Salam, Nuh Salam, all those prophets will not dare even uh, to, to raise their voice or, or intercede. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu will go and intercede and Allah will accept his intercession. So that shows the rank of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it's basically the whole objective of Shafa'a is to show the elevated rank of those who intercede. Uh, <clears throat> and another difference might be between the intercessions in this world and on the day of uh, uh, and the intercession with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that Allah has set some criteria for intercession that it can be only for the for those who have uh, testified from their heart the shahada la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah uh, one exception might be the the uncle of Prophet Muhammad sallam, where Prophet Muhammad will make intercession as you know, he died as a kafir. Uh, so the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu will make intercession so that his uh, degree of punishment is reduced, but never uh, uh, the case that uh, that the intercession will cause him to get out of the hellfire. So these are some of technical details. I don't want to go there, but I just wanted to leave this small comment on the word shafa'a here. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لا إكراه في الدين 
وقد تبين الرشد من الغي فمن يكفر بالطاغوت ويؤمن بالله فقد استمسك بالعروة الوثقى لم فصام لها والله سميع عليم الله ولي الذين آمنوا يخرجهم من الظلمات إلى النور والذين كفروا أولياؤهم الطاغوت يخرجونهم من النور إلى الظلمات أولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون ألم تر إلى الذي حاج إبراهيم في ربه أن آتاه الله الملك إذ قال إبراهيم ربي الذي يحيي ويميت قال أنا أحيي وأميت قال إبراهيم فإن الله يأتي بالشمس من المشرق فأت بها من المغرب فبهت الذي كفر والله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين أو كالذي مر على قرية وهي خاوية على عروشها قال أنا يحيي هذه الله بعد موتها فأماته الله مئة عام ثم بعثه قال كم لبثت قال لبثت يوما أو بعض يوم قال بل لبثت مئة عام فانظر إلى طعامك وشرابك لم يتسنه وانظر إلى حمارك ولنجعلك آية للناس وانظر إلى العظام كيف ننشزها ثم نكسوها لحما فلما تبين له قال أعلم أن الله على كل شيء قدير One might wonder why Surah Al-Baqarah is called as such Bakara, which is means the cow and <coughs> it's very interesting that the the story of the cow has has a the story of the cow had uh, an underlying concept that is repeated around five times in in surah al-baqara that is uh, incidences of Allah bringing a dead into life 